So here's a slightly more complicated equation involving a square root sign, involving a radical. Um, but the goal, the task, is still the same. We want to get the w by itself on one side of the equation in order to determine what its value should be. Um, so I'm going to put this task to you first. So find a couple or three people uh, to put your heads together and see if you can worm your way towards a solution for this equation. It'll take about 15 minutes. So in the equation on the left, square root of 8w minus 15 is equal to w. Uh, what did you decide to do first in trying to get this w by itself in order to solve for w? Remove the square root. Remove the square root is the first thing that we want to do here. Um, I've sort of diagrammed things out down here on the screen. And what I'm trying to show here is how the expression square root of 8w minus 15 is put together, how the order of operations puts this expression, square root of 8w minus 15, together. The square root, like a fraction bar, acts as a grouping symbol. It groups the 8w minus 15 underneath it together. So that what that means is that we have to resist the temptation, for example, to do something like try to add 15 to both sides to get the process started. That doesn't work because that 15 is being grouped together by this big radical sign that acts like parentheses that we have to get inside uh, before we can uh, do anything with that 15. So the way that the order of operations puts this together, if I'm w, then in this expression, the first thing that's happening to me is I'm getting multiplied by 8. So I'm wrapping w in this multiplication by 8 layer. And then the result of that is having 15 subtracted from it. Right? Order of operations multiplies before it subtracts. And so 8w is being wrapped up in this minus 15 subtraction layer. And then that whole thing is being wrapped up by the square root. So the outermost layer of this jawbreaker over here on the left uh, is square root flavored. Right? Um, so if we want to get to the w in the middle of the jawbreaker, the first thing we have to do is take care of the outside layer. Right? We have to get through that outer layer of wrapping paper before we can get to the present that's on the inside. Um, metaphors aside, what it means is when the square root is acting on the whole expression, that's the time when we've got it where we want it and we should square both sides to get rid of it. So the first thing that we end up doing in this equation is attending to that square root, unwrapping this purple wrapping paper that's on the outermost layer of that expression. And we know that to undo a square root, what we want is to square both sides. So when you squared both sides, what did you end up with on the left? What is the square root of 8w minus 15 quantity squared? What does that become on the left? 8w minus 15. Again, that was the whole point of squaring both sides, is that all that it does is it gets rid of the square root. Another common error that people sometimes make is that that square will somehow survive into this expression. I see this happen a lot. Resist the urge. The whole purpose of squaring was to get rid of the square root. The two of them come together and they disappear because each one undoes what the other one does. And so when they both have had their effect, nothing remains of the square or the square root. But if we square the left-hand side, then we also have to square the right-hand side. So on the right-hand side of the equation, we end up with w squared. So we still have some work to do. Right? It wasn't quite as simple as our first example, but at least our square root is gone. And because our square root is gone, this is the kind of equation we already know how to solve based on stuff that we did earlier in the course. Module 7, in particular, should be enough to get us through the rest of the solution of this equation. How does it work? What do I want to do next? to try and solve this equation for w. <coughs> yeah. What I want is I want to make one side of this equation equal to 0, because we're looking at this equation and saying, well, we've got a, a term in here with a degree of 2. So I'm going to have a quadratic trinomial in play here. I have three terms. They all have different degrees. They're not like terms to one another. So I'm not going to be able to combine them together using uh, algebra and then use the reverse order of operations to get the w by itself. That's not an option. We're stuck with these three terms the way that they are. And so our play is to subtract 
expressions from both sides in such a way that one side of our equation will become 0. And the other side will, in our example, be w squared minus 8w plus 15. I hope you'll forgive me for switching sides of the equation here, uh, but I don't have a lot of space to work with. And now what does the appearance of the 0 on this side of the equation signal to us? What are we able to do with this equation now that one side is equal to 0? Yeah, the big capital F. Uh, one of many F words that students associate with mathematics. Um, this is probably the cleanest of them. Factor. Um, so let's factor. W squared minus 8W plus 15. Um, how does that factor? Module 7. What am I looking for here? W minus 5. W minus 3. Great. W minus 5. W minus 3. Again, looking for a pair of numbers which multiply together to give me 15 and which add together to give me negative 8. So negative 5 and negative 3 fit that bill. And so then to solve that equation, once it has been factored, what's the end game here? How do I proceed from here? Yes. I find that students get really good at factoring and then forget. Like you, you work so hard to win the factoring battle in a problem like this and then forget what to do with it once you've got it. It's like the dog that chases the car and then gets a hold of the bumper and then what, right? Um, I'm full of metaphors today. Um, so the splitting step is the step that, you know, if we don't do that, we're not going to make any more progress towards solving for w. But once we have, we get these two really friendly equations. Um, and we can solve each of them in one step, adding 5 to both sides and respectively adding 3 to both sides so that w is 5 and w is 3. So here we see an example of an equation that has ostensibly two different solutions, w equals 3, w equals 5. Even though our original equation didn't have a w squared in it, which is usually our signal, for an equation that might have two solutions, that w squared appeared along the way. In fact, it appeared right at the first step when we squared both sides to get the radical away. And so that is what permitted this equation to have two different solutions. Let's look at the example on the right, square root of 12 minus 4w equals w separately. 